funding and investors. Essentially, what are the ways to get funding? How do you approach <laughs> potential investors? And uh, how, how do you essentially get the resources to start up your own business? So there are two main funding models. There are two main types of funding and most, uh, most uh, uh, funding goes within one of these two categories. Number one is debt. You might get money that you're going to repay back. It might be from a bank. It might be from a wealthy person that you know. It might be from your family. doesn't matter. It's debt. So somebody <coughs> gives you money, you're going to pay it back. And this means they do not own equity in your business. It does not dilute your ownership. <coughs> they do not get a percentage of the business. All they do is they give you money, they take it back. Number two, the second type of funding is equity. This means you're giving up a portion of your business. You're giving up stock. You're giving up control in the business. You're giving up profits down the line. And this dilutes ownership and may result in some kind of a loss of control. It might be partial um, or, or uh, it, it might result in a full loss of control over the business eventually. So generally, you have, let's say, uh, three, sort, three types of sources of funding. Number one is individuals, so these might be family members, friends, donors, high net worth individuals, angel investors, or crowdfunding, which means you can get your users to uh, maybe pre-purchase your product on a page or donate money for you to start the company. Or you can get institutions, so that means you might get banks, foundations, government institutions, or other organizations funding your business. Now, the other types of uh, funding sources are in this page, and they're some of the most talked about. So the first one is venture capitalists. So venture capitalists are similar to bankers, but they're not subject to strict regulations, and they take greater risk in making investments hoping that they can make a greater profit. They manage sometimes the money of other investors and you have uh, venture capital firms that specialize in identifying projects with high potential for growth. Uh, venture capitalists expect a high return rate, so that might be something around 25 or 30% annually, which is a huge return rate and get more actively involved in the ventures than bankers would. Now the second type, main type of, of investors here uh, is angel investors. And these are private individuals who invest in firms and receive equity in return. They almost always act as advisors or uh, sometimes they might even be co-founders if they come in at a very early stage. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about these two in a little bit more detail um, as the session goes on. There's also business incubators uh, that don't necessarily uh, invest money in your business, but what they do help you is uh, they help you get some additional training or coaching. They help you set up your business model better. Um, they might be independent or they might be uh, parts of big corporates or they might be part of your university. Um, in any case, business incubators are also somebody that you could go to, especially if you can't get funding, if you can't get uh, 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 funding, this means you're doing something wrong probably, and you should go and try and get onto one of the programs in the incubators, in improve your skill set, and then go and look for money uh, once again. So, for, I'm going to go for a couple of slides, one of them is on VCs or venture capitalists, and uh, the other one is on, uh, on uh, uh, angel investors, and these slides answer, two, uh, answer three potential questions, how do you find VCs? Uh, how do you approach them and what next? So how do you find VCs? Well, first of all, you don't just look for any uh, venture capital uh, firm. You look for firms that invest in companies like yours. So that might be companies from the same sector. Um, you also need to ensure that they invest in the stage of funding that you, see, that, that you seek. So that might be an early stage or that might be a later stage. I'm gonna uh, show you the different stage of, stages of funding uh, in a minute. Also check the firm's past deals, so uh, check the types of companies that they've invested in. If you see something similar, that probably means they're interested in the type of thing that you're doing. And uh, consider location, so uh, 
companies in certain locations. So for instance, uh, clearly around Silicon Valley, California, et cetera, tend to get a lot more uh, venture capital investment. Um, there are certain hotspots that get formed. So for instance, uh, in, in the UK, London's clearly the biggest one. Um, in Europe, uh, you have, for instance, blockchain recently uh, thrive in, uh, in Switzerland. So you have little areas that get formed. Uh, in China, it's also different across regions. In any case, consider location, uh, the location that, uh, locations that tend to receive more funding from uh, venture capital firms, locations uh, where, you could, where you should be operating your business from potentially. Um, it's, it's an important item on the list. Now, how do you approach uh, venture capital firms? Well, uh, first of all, think whether you're, uh, you or your anyone in your team has connections. Uh, introductions make a big difference with venture capital firms because they receive hundreds and hundreds of emails per day. They are the people that are giving out money to companies, remember. So there's lots of early stage companies approaching them. So if you know someone uh, that can offer you a potential introduction, that would be the, the best starting point. Um, also, you can go to networking events. So there's lots of events that are going on, uh, even here in, in Beijing, around San Lito mainly, but uh, uh, in, in Chaoyang as well. Uh, there's lots of events that have to do with, uh, with uh, networking, uh, soft sales, uh, meetings at, uh, in, in, within certain industries, etc. Can you connect with some of these venture capitalists personally? Can you go there with your business card, exchange a couple of words with them, take their business card, shoot them an email for a coffee, uh, go and talk to them for about 10 minutes. Uh, don't waste too much of your time, obviously. Uh, so can you connect with some of these people personally? Now, finally, of course, if you can't do any of these things, you can do a cold email. Uh, make sure to personalize it, so make sure that you don't send the same email to everybody. I promise you they're probably not going to reply if you do that. And it also, it's also very clear if you do that uh, to the, the person that receives it to be concise in your email. Uh, make sure that you don't waste too much of your time. They're busy people. Uh, but the cold email almost never works because they're so busy. Unless there's like a really great match between your company and what they're looking for, the cold email is unlikely to work. And they also might just skip through it. They might not, uh, just not take enough time to uh, read it in, in enough detail. So what next after you connect with them, you're probably, well, if you, if you manage to generate interest in your project, you're probably going to get an opportunity to uh, pitch your idea to them. Now with angel investors, there's a lot of uh, similar, uh, similar steps. So for instance, when, you, when you're trying to find them, you should know who you're looking for. So that's a bit similar to looking for uh, venture capital firms that invest in the same type of project. Uh, you should look for angel investors that are uh, closer to where you live rather than further away. Because uh, especially, if the investor in question would like to get involved in the company, it's hard for them to get involved in a project that's far away from the place where they live. Uh, make sure that you network uh, and make sure uh, that you understand these people don't necessarily just look for projects on their own. They work in collaboration with other high net worth individuals that they know. So uh, when you go to events, you can, you can ask people if they know people and try to get an introduction to somebody for somebody else. Um, and finally, there's also uh, lots of websites on the internet that offer matching services for companies and angel investors. Some of them uh, require a subscription, others uh, don't, but it's worth checking them out. Let's put some of them on the PowerPoint that uh, you could, you could uh, search for later and, uh, and, and have a look at them. Uh, after you approach angel investors, the, the, the process tends to have some similarities with, with venture capital uh, firms. So you're, you, you go for a meeting with them, you want to be precise, you want to be concise, you want to uh, know your basics, uh, you want to pitch your idea to them, even if it's in a more informal environment, you uh, still need to generate interest in your project. So whenever you're uh, pitching for money, you need to be very, very clear on your financial analysis. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here, but uh, these are a few basic elements that you should have absolutely solid. Whether or not you have a very detailed business plan, even if you have just a pitch deck, 
um, you would still need to be able to show that your balance sheet, your income statement, cash flow, operating budget, and break-even analysis. So it's important that you know what's your break-even point, and that's also important for them because you're putting money into your business. Uh, now, when it comes to funding, uh, the, the, there's a lot, there's a bunch of key questions um, that, uh, that that come with that, and they're kind of covered in, in what I spoke about in terms of the financial analysis.